How's it going guys? My name is Tavares and today we're going to be working on, we're going to be working on, uh, that apparently. So it is finally happening. We have the SL55 AMG in my garage and the project has begun. Now, those of you who are new to my channel, first of all, welcome and I hope you guys like it. This car was a bit of an adventure for me. I bought this car originally about two months ago for $8,900. This was about half of what the fair market value for a 2003 Mercedes-Benz SL55 AMG would have been. So in the first week of me having this car, I took it to the track. I took it on a dyno run and I managed to drive it 1,100 miles to where I live in Florida from New Jersey. So uh, this has been through a lot, but my adventures with this car are far from over. In fact, they are just beginning. I'm gonna make this into the first manual transmission SL55 in the world. And uh, it's gonna be a very, very big undertaking, but I hope I can do it. And I hope you guys will cheer me on and also help me out when I need the help. But before then, we need to do some maintenance. We need to make sure that this car is up to 100% fighting fit for uh, any mods to go on, because I don't wanna mod a car that's broken. Right now, what we're gonna do is we are going to DIY something that most people with this car would never dream of doing themselves. And that would be opening up this hood and doing a very much needed oil change. So oil changes are absolutely necessary for any car with an internal combustion engine. What the oil does is it lubricates the metal parts and it keeps them from touching each other. You don't want all the rotating metal bits to come into contact with each other because that's when you get a lot of friction, a lot of vibration, and also seizing. And we definitely don't want that on this. So an oil change is absolutely necessary, especially after the torture that I put this engine through. Now, most cars have oil changes ranging in price from $24 to $70, depending on how much oil the engine needs and what kind of oil and what kind of car it is and the intervals and whatnot. This car is a little bit different. And uh, apparently Mercedes also thinks this because when I called Mercedes Orlando, they gave me a price that was a little bit more than 24 to $70. Now I'll just come right out and say it, it was $320. At this point, you're probably wondering why the hell this car demands a $300 plus dollar oil change when most cars are about at the $50 mark at the most. So what Mercedes-Benz do, instead of calling it an oil change because they're not gonna charge $320 for an oil change, they call this an A service. And A service is a glorified oil change. A service includes oil change, filter, and then they do a visual inspection of the brakes and the belts, which you can see clearly here. They do top up some fluids here and there, but uh, that is basically it. They also have a B service for this car, which does include stuff like spark plugs, but oddly enough, the labor and parts aren't included. They just do an inspection of those components and if they're found to be faulty, then they charge you for the labor and parts involved. So a B service is the expensive one and an A service is just the mildly expensive one. But today we're gonna to be focusing on the A service and we're gonna put this car up in the air. I'm gonna show you how to do it and I'm also gonna show you how to save a lot of money, especially if you're going to the dealership for service, which you sh probably shouldn't be doing, especially if you have an older car like this, which is out of warranty anyway. So now that we're under the car, this is actually when things get really, really tough. This is why Mercedes charges all that money because this is way more complicated than what you do on an oil change on like a Toyota Camry. Well, a Toyota Camry or something poor people would drive but only have one oil drain plug, this one has two. All right, all kidding aside, here's what I think Mercedes Tech actually does when they're trying to justify a $320 oil change. I mean, I see that there's a bolt here, but I just don't know what I'm supposed to do about it. And I can't see how I can take this off. I mean, I could probably use this ratchet. That, that won't work. That will not work. You know what? You know what? They're paying me to do this. So I'm gonna try. I'm going to try. Okay. Let, let's see. Let's see how this goes. Uh, 
Come on, come on. Oh. I'm going on break. All right, now that we have finished that monumental task of unbolting two bolts, uh, I snugged both of them up, I drained all the oil out, and now we're gonna go up top and finish the job with uh, some nice new oil. So before I put this car on the ground, I have a little bit of a confession to make. You ever work with a tool so long that you basically know it like the back of your hand and uh, you feel like you can control it with your mind? I think I just got to that level with this lift. Now, this is a little bit weird, but um, bear with me because uh, check this out. It's pretty cool, right? Now that we're up top and all the oil is out of the engine, we need to remove the oil filter and that's actually really, really easy. All you need is a 25 millimeter oil wrench uh, socket and a new filter. I got this man filter. The part number is HU7185X and that will be in the description for any of you that have this engine and uh, I believe the 500 series engine is very similar as well. So what we're gonna do is just pop this on and it should come right off, fingers crossed. So we have to disassemble this thing. This is the oil cartridge and that is where the oil filter sits. And this is our old oil filter. You can see that it's not very, not very clean. Now I did change the oil before I went on the trip and before I did the quarter mile run, but as you can see, the oil gets really dark uh, when you drive it hard, and drive it hard, I did. So for this cartridge type of oil filter, all you have to do is just, just take it out just like that, put it off to the side, and I'm gonna use a pick to pick off these old O-rings, and there is a last one, last O-ring, big one right here and that should just slide right out. New filter goes in like before, uh, noting that there's only one way for it to go. Uh, so I like to match up uh, where the words are. So the words are over here, logos and everything. So that was on like this. So I'm gonna put this on in the reverse order. So the uh, logo is facing outward. And this filter was around 10 bucks. So honestly, this is, this is cheaper than most other filters. And there we go. This is a fully assembled oil filter unit. So we just put it back in, same as before. So now comes a part that uh, has a lot of people asking questions. Um, namely, what kind of oil do you put in a high performance car? A lot of people say you should only stick with the recommended um, oil manufacturer, which in this case would be Mobile One. But I don't do that because I think that companies like Mobile One or uh, Cashflow for BMW they essentially paid the company a lot of money to have the uh, company endorse them in their cars. It doesn't mean that other oils aren't better than what the manufacturer originally recommends. And I use Motil and uh, I've used this for a while on my Aston Martin and uh, actually the company reached out to me and they sent me over a few of these uh, five quart jugs for this project. So thank you very much to them, but honestly, I would have used it anyway because I want this to be running very, very well. This is their 8100XS. It's a little bit different from what I used in the Aston Martin, but this is for high displacement engines. This is also for engines with a high power per cylinder or high power per liter. Big engines like this 5.4 liter supercharged V8, that would definitely be uh, a very good candidate for this uh, formulation. And the formulation is approved by Mercedes. This is, uh, it says MV approval 229.5, 226.5, and that is exactly what we need for this engine. So um, 
It's a fully synthetic. Actually, I have to make a correction because uh, this is not fully synthetic. It is 100% synthetic. And when I spoke to the guys at Motel, they uh, told me that there is a difference because Castrol and Mobile One, they do say that they're fully synthetic, but they put some additives in there uh, that might not be 100% synthetic. So this is pretty much as, uh, as top of the line as you can go as far as oil and on a 120,000 mile engine that I want to have many, many more miles of uh, tire burning excellence. Um, this is something that I need. I need nine quarts of uh, this good stuff. Now the problem with this engine is the fact that it doesn't have a dipstick. Now Mercedes in their infinite wisdom said that uh, nothing after the year 2003, especially on the uh, S SL class, will have a dipstick. They only have a uh, internal reading um, in the electronics in the gauge cluster. So that's smart. I personally would have preferred to have a dipstick, but you know, beggars can't be choosers and with this car, I'm definitely a beggar. So uh, yeah, without further ado, let me put nine quarts in there. Actually, nine quarts is the oil capacity. So I'm gonna put eight quarts, then I'm going to check it on my gauge cluster, see if it's okay, if it needs to add a quart or whatnot. And uh, if it's okay, then uh, we should be good to go and we are done. All right, all the oil should be in the engine and hopefully not on the floor. So uh, let's check if the level is okay. Now I have to go into the menu and I don't actually know which menu it is, but I think it's this one. All right, it says engine oil level measuring now and engine oil level okay. We are done. There is enough engine oil in the engine, which is where it should be. Uh, so let's start the car. Sounds pretty good to me. All right, job done. So the last thing we're gonna do now that we're all done is uh, reset the service interval. And uh, that is done through usually a scanner. Um, some people do it through a star scanner. That's a star diagnostic. That's the dealer level scanner that Mercedes has. You can also use a MB2 like I had in my uh, previous episode, or you can just forego the entire process and do it manually. So you have to go to the menu where it gives you the service interval. It uh, tells me that uh, my service B is in 3,800 miles. It doesn't really matter to me because my service intervals are gonna be different. Uh, I'm changing basically everything on this car and I'm always gonna be working on it. So I'm gonna know when things are gonna need to be changed. So I'm just gonna press and hold the reset button in the middle of the dash. And it's going to tell me, do I want to reset service interval confirmed by using reset button? There we go, service interval has been reset. So after topping up all the fluids and uh, checking the brakes, my brakes actually do need some work, I am done with the service A and uh, I saved a lot of money. If I had taken this to Mercedes, I would have been out 320 bucks, but as it stands, I'm not out that much money. Well, at least way less than 320 bucks. The biggest expense for me was, uh, was oil. Well, Motul uh, provided me with the oil, but had I uh, got this on my own, these would have been around $45 each. So uh, two of these would have been 90 bucks, plus a $10 filter would have been $100. $100 is on the high side of an oil change, especially if you're doing it yourself, but it's not that bad considering the alternative is triple the price and you probably have to give up your car for one to two days. I know I'm not driving this car down there so they can give me those judgmental looks. I know what they're doing. As always, links for everything will be in the description below, so check it out there. If you like this video, and I hope you do, consider subscribing because it really helps me get the word out that I love doing stuff like this. This project will be very, very good, and uh, I'm very excited. We are gonna get regular episodes uh, every week, and we're gonna do really fun stuff with this car, and maybe we'll fit in some other car stuff along the way, I'm not sure, but uh, this is gonna be top priority for me, and uh, hopefully this can get done soon-ish. But uh, if you'd like to contact me, you can reach me at the Real Tavares. that is Instagram and Twitter, and uh, facebook.com slash asktavares. Astavarj at gmail.com is my email and uh, ask me anything you want. And if you wanna support me and uh, you wanna buy one of these shirts, those are all in the description as well. So check those out. But until next time, this is me telling you that on cars like this that require oil changes like every other car, but you don't wanna spend an arm and a leg getting there, then you need to wrench every day.